qualified, professional, and compassionate doctors talking real solutions to real health problems. On the Doc Talk today, Dr. Mark Moyingo, as we discuss assisted reproductive technology. Uganda has one of the highest fertility rates in the world, standing in around 6.7, roughly seven babies delivered by each woman. However, there's a percentage of ladies, women, who have found it very hard to have children. And most of them have struggled most of their lifetime to make their families, uh, to make their families complete by having children. However, advances in technology have helped us solve some of these problems. And what is uh, medically termed as assisted reproductive technologies. Viewers, you're most welcome to the Doc Talk. With me, I have Dr. Jaffa Nyombi, uh, Dr. Mark Muyingo, a specialist, a facility specialist, and myself, Dr. Richard Billy Ndiwan. You're most welcome. You're welcome. And, and when, when you're talking about the statistics, it's quite amazing because 6.7 sounds quite high. And at the same time, we still have a good volume of people who are failing to have children, which usually cuts across between the poor and the rich. And these are people that we see on a daily basis. Uh, Dr. Mark, who normally sees these people at the last, like at the end of the problem, uh, should tell us, I mean, what, what brings these people to his clinic? Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Jaffa. Um, you know, we, when we look at health, we want to look at health holistically. Uh, we have, uh, it just doesn't mean the absence of disease, but uh, also if someone has a psychological problem or physio uh, social problem, uh, it brings them to be unhealthy. So not having children is one of those places which is intangible, but it's a disease in its own because yeah, the person okay. is... Just remind me that failure to make babies is now going to be, be termed as an abnormality. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, if you fail to make someone pregnant, then you, are, abnormal. you are abnormal. In, in the society, you are an outcast. <laughs> an outcast. Uh, people will point hey, How can you fail to make someone pregnant? Anyway? True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when these people come to the, uh, there are quite a number of them who are referred uh, to the clinics, and we see them, you definitely see that uh, they are they're not very, they're, they're not healthy, they are not happy, uh, because something is lacking in their, their lives. They want to make their lives complete and uh, be able to have children. And I'm told that a woman who's looking for a, a, a child is very desperate. And they they go an extra mile. Uh, they try to do as, as much as they can. People go on to sell their property as long as you're telling them it's going to give them a child. So it's, it's quite a huge problem here we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these assisted reproductive technologies we have talked about um, is a, a, a range, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very big range of uh, technologies that we are talking about, ranging from the most simple to the most advanced. Uh, the good thing is currently in Uganda, we almost have the whole range of um, uh, technologies available. Uh, and the most simple to the most advanced, I think also moves, like, as, as, even the money trend is like this. <laughs> from the simple, to the most advanced, even the money, I think, moves also on the same thing. Yes. And they, just <laughs> they are becoming available, but I think they are also not obviously available to, 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 the, low, to the low earners. They are really available to, because they are quite... Even the middle costly. income ones struggle. And, and most, of, most of our public health, health facilities, really, are finding it difficult to have these facilities. Yeah. I, think, I think the government is, is confused by the message. Because even the funders, if you tell them that now the fertility rate is 6.7, they're not interested to fund this. But for us, we are seeing these patients on a daily basis. We are, we are seeing the problem. I think they would prefer to, to have that, that percentage cut down a little further, yes. other than improving. But, but it can be a very bad social problem to those who are not able to have it. Yeah, I, I think uh, the government has not basically uh, put a deaf ear. You know that um, the advances in the National Referral Hospital. Yes. That is one of the areas that the Ministry of Health has put uh, some emphasis on. They are building one of those um, assisted reproductive technology centers, which is uh, going to run in the National Referral Hospital. So they are feeling uh, basically what is going on with these people. You said simple and, uh, and, and the ad most advanced methods. Yes, uh, I mean, does, does it depend on what problem I have? 
or is it my choice to go for the simple uh, method or the complicated method? Does it depend on how many children I want? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it actually depends on the problem, the problem you have. Uh, when we talk about the simple, we talk about things like uh, IUI. Yes. People have heard about IUI. Intrauterine insemination. Yes. International yes. university. No. <laughs> it's intrauterine insemination. Basically, uh, maybe, maybe someone just need to, to know the basic. Okay. That, that for anyone to have a child, yes. you must have a male gamete, uh, which is the sperm. Well-functioning male gamete. You must have a female gamete, which is normal. You must have a well-functioning female reproductive tract uh, that is involved in the, the cervix, the uterus, and the tubes. All those things have to be functioning quite well for you to be able to have a child normally. So where we have these problems, they have to be somewhere there. Either someone will have a problem with a male gamete, someone will have a problem with a pathway, that is the cervix, the and uterus, could be some the, um... or the tube and then someone could have a problem with a female gamete. And there's some percentage of the unexplained ones, yeah, yeah. whereby you have, uh, you have um, uh, <coughs> investigated and everything looks normal for both, mm. but some of babies are not coming through. Yeah. Of course, that, what we call unexplained, some of it, when you dig further, you can find some of those problems. Yeah. You know that uh, the structure, especially of the sperm, has things that are supposed to make it be able to go into the egg. Yeah, for fertilization. Okay, in so, IUI, Mark, yes. uh, what, what does someone do? What do you do? Okay, so, so basically IUI, which is uh, intrauterine insemination, is uh, if you, you have tried conventionally and uh, someone has not been able to conceive, uh, sometimes the, the count of the male gametes might be low. Uh, you try to and get the, the sperm. The sperms. Yes. What, what, you, what people will commonly tell you, sperm count. Is sperm count, count is low. Okay. Yeah. So you are trying to get uh, the best out of those uh, the few ones, the few ones that are there. Yeah. And then you prepare the lady, uh, give her medication to grow. Is the this eggs. a good percentage? Because commonly in Africa, or even in Uganda, males males don't see themselves as people who have problems with. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at actual across, uh, the male factor is about thirty percent. Oh. It's, it's, it's quite, quite a big one. But always yeah. in African uh, tradition, you think always the, it's it's, usually it's the, the woman, with the, the woman with the problem. Mm. We prepare these sperms as the lady has also been prepared. At the time of our violation, the sperms are That put, is when uh, someone is releasing their is egg. releasing the egg. Okay. The woman cannot collect her sperms in the syringe and put them inside there. Incidentally, these uh, sperms, that liquid they come in is called semen. Mm. But uh, the semen has so many other things which are there, cells, debris, uh, things that are not very good inside the So in the, other words, whatever, the whatever the, the, the manager treats is not the sperms, as people yeah, say, this exactly. is not only the sperms, yes. other, yeah, in fact, bulk we, of other yeah, yeah, we've seen a number of people who say that, well, I ejaculate, yes. but you actually find that there are no sperms. Yes, so there telling there him that there are no sperms, but yet yes. he sees ejaculate Maybe the, is a problem, but <laughs> producing sperm air, is maybe. just part and parcel. <laughs> okay, and like you said, you can have a whole lot of semen, but with very few sperms. Or they can have uh, a number of sperms that yes. are actually not very not well. working well. Yes. Yes. But I always tell my, the ladies, I always say that, you know, have you ever imagined that we produce millions and millions of sperms? And for you produce one egg. And they all have to be injected there, but only one may become successful. Meaning the journey from where you introduce our sperms to where they, they swim to reach the egg, I think it's a very rough. So the recommendation should really be if, if, if a couple is failing to have children, at least a, a, a sperm analysis should be done. Take your semen, look at your sperm, see where your problem is. Do I have normal sperms? Do I have a good number of sperms? Are they able to swim well? Then Dr. Mark will tell you exactly what to do. You are watching The Dog Talk Show.